Yum 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 yum. Welcome to the Casbah, a beautiful atrium-style restaurant in downtown St. John's, attached to Victoria Station, by the way, which they say is a haunted building. Ooh. So what better location to do our <laughs> Halloween special of One Chef, One Critic? Hi, I'm Carl Wells, food critic and food journalist. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. And Steve, uh, this is going to be a fun show. We're dressed, as you can see, folks, for uh, the Halloween special. A little sci-fi. Gone sci-fi today. Yep. And you're, uh, you're from Star Trek, aren't you? Admiral James Kirk, always an admiral. And I'm from Star Wars, a stormtrooper ready to do battle for the Republic. Uh, by the way, before I do battle, could you I'll just... I'll get that out uh, of the way, Carl. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit uh, stiff uh, today. Anyway, yeah. some of the servers have been giving us weird looks. They did know? me when I came in the yeah. door as yeah. well. Anyway, um, you know, Darren Han made these costumes. He's with Sci-Fi on the Rock. He's our special guest in the kitchen today. He is, and I'm going to be preparing a beautiful Sci-Fi meal as well from Scotty no less. Sci-Fi meal. <laughs> I can't wait to see what that is. And later we're going to find out the story of Victoria Station, the spooky building. We're going to talk to some of the servers here who've heard and seen mm -hmm. some weird things or have heard reports of. And Dale Jarvis of the Haunted Walk is going to be our guest as well. And we see him many a night walking down the street with his entourage. That's you know, right. Explaining he everything. knows everything about spooky stuff in St. Yeah, John's. Yeah. Now, what do you have? I have a Manhattan chowder with a tomato base and uh, smoked mussels and some scallions and everything else. And, what do you and I've got there? some beautiful sea scallops seared and in a maple, ginger and rum sauce. Looks beautiful. Let's get going with this Halloween edition of our show. You okay? <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, good. A lot of restaurants play background music. Sometimes it's inappropriate. It's too loud or it's, it's just not the right music. Uh, don't be afraid to ask management to change it. Welcome on deck for the uh, One Chef, One Critic cooking segment. We have a really special guest for our Halloween show today. Wait a minute. Where's our guest? Sir. How, how did you do that? It's amazing. Transporter. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Can we all have one? So, is this you can borrow it. <laughs> is this the device you were talking about, uh, Deb? Wow. It helps you transport really between neat. the ship down here, anywhere wow. you want to go. You're welcome to borrow. I might, be, you uh, well, I might borrow that from you later sure, on. Sure, no problem, yeah, sir. No idea for that. No problem. Anyway, come on in and hey, join excellent. us, Thank uh, you. folks. Thank this you. is uh, Darren Han. He's with Sci-Fi on the Rock. And Sci-Fi on the Rock is um, a fan club, uh, science fiction fans, I guess folks who are involved in all kinds of science fiction and yep. who like all kinds of science fiction. Yep, and we put off the convention once every, every year. It's coming up April 25th and 26th. Now, first off, I've got to ask you uh, about your costume, because uh, you told me you didn't wear your own costumes very often. You made ours. But, I made uh, yours, yeah. What are you wearing today? I'm wearing a uniform from the show Star Trek Voyager. So you're doing that in our honor. Your honor, it in our, our honor. You're Thank you very Especially much. Especially just for you guys. <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, Steve is Star Trek as well. Steve has gone up as Admiral James T. Kirk. I'm right. the admiral. He's so, the boss. So he's the earlier version. He's the you're earlier. You're the later version. Sort of. <laughs> sort of, yeah. Yep. Now, Steve is doing a special treat for you today. I oh, still, I yep. certainly am. I've got a beautiful dish from Scotty from the oh. Star Trek uh, series. Excellent, excellent, and, excellent. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to poke some beautiful halibut. Yep. I've got some water on there. But first okay. of all, I'm just going to get a carrot. Just, just for the halibut. Just for the halibut. We'll just put some carrots, we're going to put them into the stock, into the pan right there. Did you say this dish was named Scotty, Scotty's? This is Scotty's halibut, poke Scott, salad. Oh, Scotty from Star Trek. This is Scotty from Star Trek, correct. Oh, the engineer. Just, the engineer. Captain, I'm giving you all the steam <laughs> and power I can. I can't give you any more. That's, well, good. That's, that's good. good. That's good. That's good. He's getting better. Anyway. He's getting better. If you put four cloves into the stock as well. And then I'm also going to cut some onions to go in there, some sliced onion. Just a little bit there. Is it the cloves that ward off vampires? No, garlic. That's garlic. That's garlic, that's yeah, garlic. Yeah. yep. Halloween theme, you see vampires, I figured I'd bring that up. Absolutely. Yep. And then we're just going to put a, a lemon slice in there as well. Then what I'm going to do, I'll get you to lay the halibut on top of this stock there. Okay, there we go. And there's some lemon there. You can just go straight ahead. 
beautiful mm. fish. It is, isn't it? Nice fresh halibut. I got all the all the groceries here. I got it from the biosphere, uh, Coleman's. You know, oh, excellent! Fresh, yes. That's right. Col- 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 Coleman's biosphere. Coleman's yeah, biosphere. Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I think, Carl, maybe you don't have your gun with you, so maybe I'll get you to season it with a little bit of pepper. Oh, I, I do have a gun here somewhere. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't want you to use it. <laughs> <laughs> my ray gun. I could, prob- ray gun. I, could, I could probably cook this halibut with and my gun. And then you could just put a little bit of salt on top of there, there we go. as well. Thank you. There you go. Just, you just have to turn it. There we go. So tell us a little bit about this convention that's yeah, coming that's up perfect. in April. Okay, The convention is on April 25th and 26th, uh, next spring. Mm-hmm. And just it up it's, a bit uh, it's a science fiction fantasy convention that deals with everything from Star Trek to Star Wars, right. comic books, yeah. Harry Potter. Right now we've got two guests coming, confirmed. We have uh, Von Armstrong, yes, who is an actor from Star Trek. He's confirmed to come. He played uh, Admiral Forrest on Enterprise and a bunch of number, uh, other Star Trek uh, Uh, characters and we have a new up-and-coming actor by the name of Christian Simpson from England he played on Harry Potter and Goblet of Fire uh, yeah the first Batman movie and he also played in Star Wars so you You put the lid now on Cal oh the lid yeah lid on top on the porch and we do have a website it's uh, sci-fi on the rock.com if anybody wants to have a look at it and check it out now um You've met a lot of these uh, actors from all of the different science fiction yes, shows, I have, haven't yeah. you? He's met a lot, but we're still going to do some cooking as well, Cal. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we've, got, we've got three egg yolks there. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll okay. start to put them over the stove there. And we're going to make like a sabio. You need, you oh, need yes. these... Yep. Uh, whisk. Whisked, whisked up. Yeah, okay. just a little bit more. Carry on. Okay. Now you can talk. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah, I was saying, you, you've met a lot of these actors, eh? Yes, I've met uh, Walter Koenig, who played Chekhov on the original Star Trek. Mm-hmm. I've met uh, George Takei, who played Sulu. Yep. I met a number of actors from uh, Stargate. Uh, uh, Teal, the guy who plays Daniel Jackson. I can go on there now. A lot of actors. Now we'll give it to Darren. There you go. Oh, carry excellent. On Tar- carry on now. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what else happens at the convention? Do people come in costume, that sort of thing? Like, yes. Like, like I'm exactly. dressed. Yep. People come in costume, and we have a costume contest. Uh, we have workshops. Carry oh. on. Carry on. A little faster. We have a costume contest. Uh, we have workshops that deal with uh, a lot of stuff in theater, like how to do makeup, how to make your own costume, how to uh, write novels, how to do screenplays. Really on the other side of, uh, of science fiction, learning how to do everything. You mentioned makeup. Make sure it doesn't uh, scramble the egg there. Okay, very, sir. Very, carry yep. on. And I'm just going to add a little bit of fish stock to there as well. Okay, and this is going to be our sauce for the fish. Oh, that looks beautiful. Okay, carry on. You mentioned um, makeup. Uh, yes. You actually met one of the Westmores, uh, the yes. famous makeup family in Hollywood, right? Yeah, Michael Westmore was here uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, and he got in contact with me through the website. And his wife is actually from St. John's. Wow. She, her family moved away when she was very young. They moved to the U.S. She got a job in Hollywood, and she married Michael Westmore. So that's a Star Trek connection here in to Newfoundland. There's this, a lot of Newfoundlanders working in Hollywood, actually. Yeah, so okay. uh, when you think about it, there's a lot of Newfoundlanders in Hollywood. Yes, there is, yeah. Writing and working in production and yeah. that sort of thing. How's that good? It's carrying on good, yeah. Okay, yeah. Now, for this, we have to we have to make a garnish for the halibut as well. That's what Scotty said, you know. Scottish. Because he's running backwards and forwards, trying to run the ship and everything else. That's true, sir. We're, we're going to do some sliced tomatoes, we're going to do some, some sliced cucumbers, some sliced radishes, and we're going to top that with some olives. So oh, sounds wonderful. Yeah, always. You always, when you're cutting a tomato or, or any fruit, you always want to keep it on the flat. And for this particular one, I'm going to cut it straight in half, like so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Look like you've got your Ginsu knife yeah, I've got there my Ginsu today. knife. <laughs> I don't have a gun, though. <laughs> and then we're just going to slice it nice and thinly, and we're going to start decorating the plate to put the halibut on afterwards. You nice. See? So Steve, just start and get a thick. thick. Okay, now we can bring it up and okay. just give it to me there. Oh, okay. that's fine. <laughs> gotta go. That's got, this gotta happened go. to me on this show. Gotta go to sick bay now. You just have to pretend to it doesn't bay. hurt. No, gotta make sure it doesn't <laughs> hurt. It's thickened up nicely there. Yeah, we're going to do it. Add a little bit more fish stock to that. Go to sick bay and see Dr. Crusher or Dr. McCoy. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Coming up now. Now, uh, I was going to ask you something. I'm a stormtrooper from uh, Star, Wars. Star Wars. Yes, sir. Uh, do stormtroopers ever eat? I've never seen any of those guys eat. Well, they usually eat, but you don't yeah. usually see it on, on the screen for some yeah. reason. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. They usually always wear their helmets like what you have there. Of course, if they're wearing an outfit like I'm wearing, they can't eat very much because no. they'll just... <coughs> yeah, they'll bust that out of the <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, that looks wonderful. Beautiful. We're just going to have now a little bit of carry on whisking. Yes. Oh, awful bossy. For Steve has been very bossy. Very bossy. Yeah. Very bossy. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to add some nice family sour cream into there. Carry on whiskey, don't be shy. Yes, sir. Okay. Like so. 
That's a beautiful sauce to go over it. There you go. That's beautiful. It is, actually. And now we're just going to add a few shrimp to that as well, so not being shy to it. There so we go. how on earth did you get into actually making costumes like these? Started going to conventions and seeing them up at other conventions on the mainland, mm -hmm. and a lot of my friends wanted to get costumes, and mm -hmm. we just started, just decided to start making our own, and Great. it evolved from there. Well, this one actually looks a bit complicated because it's got all of these plastic segments and so forth. I mean, how did you actually bend the plastic? And well, I use a, uh, I got a device made called a vacuum form table, just a homemade oh, okay. thing, and I use actually an oven, and yep. I have the molds for the different parts. And it's just a process of heating the plastic and forming it down over the pieces. Mm -hmm. At the conventions, you'll see a lot of people, like at uh, the upcoming convention, they will have a costume contest. And there'll be people that'll make their own costumes and bring it in. And Excellent. Oh, you know, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to so be a lot of fun. No good sauce there. We just put it, uh, you've got it turned off now, Carl, at this side of you? Uh, it's down on low. Down on low. We can just put that back onto the stove and that'll okay. just keep that warm. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So we've got our tomatoes. I'm just going to poke your. Uh, there you go, sir. Neck piece back down here because it's sticking up. up. And, uh, Thank you, sir. It's kind of bugging me. <laughs> 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 well, I wouldn't want to bug a stormtrooper. Now we're just going. No, you shouldn't bug a stormtrooper. No, you shouldn't. No, no, no. That's looking nice, Steve. Yeah, Especially when he wants to be teleported again. Yes, you know, he like, does. He might, yes. You know, so we get some tomatoes, nice. some cucumbers. Yeah. And this is all Scotty's recipes. Oh, know? yes, yeah. He gave me a call on his. Communicator. Yep. Communicator. Uh, I'm, yep. gonna, uh, I'm just going to check out, uh, while you guys are finishing this off, I'm mm -hmm. going to check out and uh, go down to the wine cellar and talk okay. to Jeremy about the wines. Can, do you think I could borrow your oh, sure. uh, teleporter? Not a problem. I've got an idea that maybe I should maybe teleport down to the wine cellar and I'm going to put my helmet on and this will really surprise Jeremy. <laughs> he always likes new toys, you see. Oh, this will really surprise Here Jeremy. Here you go, sir. You just press that button and Thank away you, you go. Thank you very much. Here we go. Teleporting to the wine cellar. He's gone. He's gone. He's, he's gone. gone. Well, he's gone down to the wine cellar and he says he's going to meet Jeremy. All he's going to do now is, is transport him to himself because there's nobody down there. There's no one down there. Nobody down there. Where's he going to? And we've got this beautiful meal. See, we always cook for three. We never cook for four. There's nobody down there. I am a stormtrooper for the Republic, here to destroy droids. I said, here to destroy droids. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, cool or what? That's something. Listen, I, I got to I teleported in here. Wine show this week, I was there. Your buddy, Steve, totally like ignored me. I went up, I said hello, I tried to make bygones be got bygones, do all that stuff he wanted me to do. And he just like blew me off like I was nothing. It was just like, hey, who are you? What's his problem? We're back on Steve again. Well, he started this, right? Like, you know, I tried to be nice. He started it, you started it. Uh, this is really childish. It's really childish. Anyway, listen. The problem is Steve doesn't believe you exist. Wow. He thinks you're a figment of my imagination. You and Andrew. He thinks you're, you know, I've got a couple of gnomes down here. Doesn't believe you exist. Okay, well... Not my fault. That's fine. Anyway, uh, you know... I smelled over. something cooking upstairs. What's, yeah, what's the Yeah, well, he's there? cooking uh, Scotty's halibut. Okay. Scotty, you know, from Star Trek? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's got a beautiful uh, Admiral Kirk outfit, by the way. Steve does. Oh, okay. And I'm a stormtrooper. Yeah. Really? Uh, but anyway, he's got this uh, beautiful dish, uh, Scotty's halibut. It's got cream. It's got shrimp. Cream. It's beautiful. Okay. So uh, what kind of wine can we can we have to go uh, with this? You know what? What did I see here earlier? We got some things here for you. I have, well, let's start off. This is one actually I picked up today at the liquor store. My friend Don gave me this one. This is Odorous. Mm -hmm. From uh, Spain, basically Godella is the grape for this one. It's it's an completely indigenous to uh, Spain. Uh, really nice fruit to it. Uh, great acidity. Great for food. Fish it would be ideal for, I think, and it's organic as well, which is always nice. So this you're looking around What's nineteen dollars. Uh, okay, nineteen dollars. Yeah, oh, and then sort of medium price. I mean, I sort of went with wines were a little different today. They sort of are hard to find in the liquor store. You wouldn't really. You might pass over Saint Varenne. This is a Burgundy mm. Chardonnay nice. uh, from the Commune of Saint Varenne in Burgundy in Macon. Uh, basically Chardonnay, uh, they don't use a lot of oak, but it's still a really nice refreshing Chardonnay, nice sort of mm -hmm. buttery tones to it as well. Again, another great dish for something like halibut, because it is pretty heavy, it's a heavy fish and, and it should go well with that. And then sort of the, if you want to go into the higher end stuff, you know, a little upscale for uh, Captain Kirk or whatever, Poligny Matrache. This is, you know, sort of a premium Chardonnay from mm -hmm. uh, Burgundy. Again, a, lot, a little bit more oak to this, good minerality. 
great, great wine, and you know it, it's it's a star on its own, but it'll be great with the with that meal as well. Steve's but they're an admiral, all great. By the way, not captain. He's admiral cook. Okay. I'm gonna go sure. with the uh, odorous. That's a that's a good one. It's it's great. It's, it's, uh, and it's something nice different. Price. Something you don't see every day. And by the way, listen. Yeah. Darren, uh, Darren uh, sent you down this uh, costume. It's uh, Captain Kirk really? from the original uh, Star Trek series. Oh, that's lovely, but uh, isn't Steve already Captain Kirk? He's Admiral Kirk. Admiral Kirk. Well, you know what? He can remain Admiral Kirk and I'll just be myself. The gnome. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. The nobody. Anyway, I'm going to go off and uh, decant this wine and uh, teleport. Don't forget your uh, helmet here. Yeah, I'll, I'll get that later. Okay. All forward positions are advanced. How come stormtroopers have all the fun? Anyway, where is Carl? Well, you, know, you haven't returned. Yeah. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> a nice little this talk. This is yeah. really cool. That's Thanks very much, uh, Darren. Welcome, welcome, that was sir. great. Oh, look, and the uh, wine arrived safely and all. Excellent. Uh, we've got a nice uh, Spanish white wine here for you. So, oh, uh, Steve, hand me your glass. Perfect. See if I can do this without spilling anything or uh, you know, all that body armor you've got. Cracking the uh, cracking the armor. Yeah, yeah. That's very this nice. Is great. Yeah. So uh, the halibut turned out really nice. It, did. it looks like, like, the like look it's going to be nice and moist. And, yeah, uh, sir. You, you, you did miss the plate presentation, as you can see. Yeah. We've got the, the shrimp and the sauce over there. We've there we nice go. Nice laid our tomatoes out and mm. the cucumbers. And uh, now uh, well, there we go. Steve, uh, uh, we I. I I forgot to tell Darren this, but we're actually not allowed to uh, drink on this program. Okay. It's a rule that Rogers TV have. Mm -hmm. But well, we, we can, can, sniff, uh, we can sniff. Yes. And we can swirl. Mm, very and nice. we can admire it. Mm -hmm. We're just not allowed to drink it. Okay. <laughs> we'll do that later. Yeah. Sure. Now let's right. uh, dig into uh, Steve's uh, beautiful halibut, and it really does look gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And by the way, folks, if you'd like to have the recipe for Steve's uh, halibut, uh, a la Scotty, uh, you can get it. And uh, by the way, uh, we're also going to take a recipe from this book, which is a science fiction uh, recipe book, and have that on the website as well. So thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Mm. Thanks for having me. Delicious, delicious. Mm. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you and a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. Don't throw out leftover wine, freeze it into cubes, and use it into casseroles and sauces. The Casbah's done an amazing job on this dessert, a special one for Halloween, a pumpkin cheesecake, Steve. Mm, what do you have? Beautiful. I have a croissant bread pudding with white and dark chocolate, and a raspberry and strawberry coulis, and a dusting of cocoa. Oh, oh boy, that looks amazing. It does. I'll tell you something else that's amazing. Some of the stories that Dale Jarvis was mm -hmm. telling me earlier about the ghosts of Victoria Station, which is right next door here to the Casbah. They actually rent it out for private parties and that sort of thing. Dale had great stories about the Victoria Station, but also some other pubs and and John's Ooh, Ooh, stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Ooh. Stuff. Well, here we are. We're in Victoria Station, which is the uh, haunted part of this building. And uh, there are all sorts of um, interesting stories, to say the least, about things that have been heard and seen here over the years. Dale Jarvis is with me. Dale is of the St. John's haunted hype, of course. Uh, he writes about the supernatural. And Dale, uh, I'm actually, uh, first I want to say I'm kind of relieved to see you're wearing a costume because I was feeling a little bit awkward wearing this stormtrooper outfit with you. <laughs> costume? <clears throat> Uh, anyway, uh, I was wondering, um, tell me about this building. Uh, I understand that before it was actually Victoria Station, it was something else? Yeah, that's right. Uh, this was the site of the original Kirk in St. John's, the old Scottish Presbyterian Church. It's still in this very site, and then it was destroyed by fire in 1892 in the Great St. John's Fire. And then so there were probably people, you know, buried from this building. They had funerals here. Quite possibly, yeah. It was a church for many years. Mm. And then after the building was destroyed, a new building was constructed, the building that's here now. Uh, it was constructed for two doctors, uh, Kavanaugh and Mitchell. And they used this building 
as their offices, but also as a surgery. Uh, so there were surgeries that were carried oh out. Oh my in gosh! This oh yeah. my gosh! So they were actually, you know, operating on people. So people probably died on the operating table, maybe in this very room we're standing in. Very possible. Yeah. So. Uh, Tell me about the uh, the people who've worked here over the years as servers. Have have any of those people reported any strange, weird sort of things? Yes, absolutely. Um, several of the servers who've worked here over the years, or staff who've worked in the building, have had all kinds of strange experience. experiences. Some of them were typical sort of ghostly activity, like objects moving on their own or cold spots. Some of them were a bit more dramatic. There was a server working at one point here who uh, came into the room and she found a very well-dressed Edwardian gentleman standing by the mantelpiece. He was standing there smoking a pipe and uh, he pulled down his pipe and he looked at the woman and then faded away. And he was nicknamed Jacob by the staff of the time. That was when it was run as Victoria Station. Other staff have reported strange things happened. There was a woman who worked here who would hang up Christmas decorations. And every year she would hang up the Christmas decorations and all the lights would go out. And uh, she believed it was due to a ghost by the name of Mary. And Mary may be the same ghost. There's another ghost who's been reported here, a very attractive female ghost who's been seen to smile sweetly at uh, the staff before she vanishes. Uh, you mentioned uh, male, female ghosts there. Uh, are there any statistics on, on the gender of ghosts? Are there more male ghosts than female ghosts? or uh, I think it's pretty evenly split. And then you, you could get other types of ghosts as well, like ghost ships and uh, ghost dogs. Uh, there seems to be no, uh, no statistical breakdown, really, for that there's more female or male What ghosts. about other restaurants and pubs in the area? Yeah, there's a few that are known to be haunted. There's a very well-known story for the Duke of Duckworth. Uh, that is said to have a ghost that appears in the window immediately above the main entrance, which has been seen to wave at people going up McMurdo's Lane. And probably the most haunted uh, pub, or the most famous haunted pub in St. John's is Christian's Pub on George Street, which has uh, another female ghost that has been reported wandering around in the after hours, and her footsteps have been reported above the bar. Mm. The Dale, uh, 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 I gotta go. Uh, there's a candelabra back there, and I think I just saw it move. I'm getting the heck out of here. I don't know which is more frightening, ghost in a restaurant or a grown man wandering around in a stormtrooper outfit. Oh boy, that pumpkin cheesecake was amazing. Beautiful. Great desserts here at the Casbah. Anyway, uh, we've had a fabulous uh, Halloween show. Dale Jarvis told some really interesting stories about did. Victoria Station yeah. and some other stuff. You brought, and, certainly bring me back again. And the costumes were brilliant. Thanks to Darren for those. And that teleporter, which was kind of like an Apple uh, iPort. I, I still can't figure out <laughs> how it works. But anyway, um, people should do this more often. It's fun. I don't know about this costume, but... <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining us on the Halloween edition of One Chef, One Critic. Next year, you're going to be the Tin Man. I'll always be an admin. We're going to get a galvanized. We're going to get a galvanized suit for you. Mm. Why couldn't I be the admiral? I'm the admiral. Why did you have to be the admiral? Because I, I was promoted. Because you're a chef, is I, that no, it? No, I used to be. It's captain, because you're a chef. A chef, Captain Admiral. <laughs> I hope Steve watches this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's the suit. <laughs> it's the suit. It's power hungry. <laughs> <coughs> it's the troop suit. I'm for sorry. Carl. <clears throat> I don't think stormtroopers actually ate. <laughs> Probably tablets injected into the yeah. facility. <laughs> I should have brought a couple of tablets here. I probably sucked something from a tube or... <laughs> Injected into you from the side. Yeah. Oh. yeah. There's a candelabra back there, and I, I think I s s s saw it move. So, I'm getting the hell out of here. No. 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 Why? Freeze it into you. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>